So you want to paint this figure. Psych! It's a bunch of this figure. And you want to apply the same details to each one. Bum, bum, da, da, da. This sounds like a job for DIY reusable paint masks. We're gonna try a few techniques, y'all, and I can almost, but not 100% guarantee at least one of these techniques you've never seen before, probably. Hit that intro. Now, of course, we can just use masking tape and uh, make us a mask like that. And it would be wonderful if the question was just what color we use. We ain't got to worry about defining the shape. The mask will do that for us. But we want something, like I said, repeatable. First, let's try our putty mold. This is easy mold silicone putty. I've used it many times on the channel. It's a two-part one-to-one ratio that we mix until it looks like some great bubblicious. Now, when we go to apply our silicone putty, we want to ease into it. We don't want to slap it on now. And then, once we got it pretty well into the details, we want to give it kind of a good even pressure to yeah. All right, so let's say you got you a mask and you can see your detail right there. You can just cut around it with uh, Xacto, but trust me, uh, well, you might be able to, but it's very nearly impossible for Craftsman to cut a clean circle. Instead, I get a hold of me a tube and you can pick a different diameter depending on what you need, but we're going to line it up and carefully just apply pressure. You're going to rotate it, might spin it a little bit. But what should happen is you get a clean hole cut uh, all the way through the silicone. See that? And if you can't find some tubing, just uh, get you some old antennas or something. You can disassemble and get some multiple sections that are also different sized for your various needs. But what if we need something more than a simple hole? Here I have a resin copy of our figure. And I'm going to take some epoxy sculpt right here, which is a two-part epoxy clay. And I'm just going to go around and block in all the areas where we want to have an opening. It feels a little bit excessive, probably, but uh, it, this is a preferential thing. Craftman is more comfortable right here uh, doing this this step than I am the, the cutting step, okay? So you may not even want to use this method, but hang tight. I got some more things to show you. Let's just knock this out real quick. I like to start by taking a little bit of silicone putty and meshing it into a detail area, just like this. And then once we got it snug down, flush and good, take my bulk of my putty and we're going to mash it, smush it and distribute it around and shape it kind of like a mask. Here's a sample when I made just so I can show you. Uh, you can cut, in this case, I'm cutting a visor opening very carefully, very nervous rackingly doing this. Uh, but it is possible, but look, I'm telling you, I like the other way, but uh, it's up to you. Now, we're still going to try the rubber mask here in a minute, but I started thinking about other options like epoxy sculpt for a mix. Instamorph, somebody's probably going to mention Instamorph, but uh, in my experience, it's, it's harder to get that thin than it is the silicone, but your mileage may be various. But green stuff, uh, you can use green stuff as a mask too. Look at that. See? Yeah. Just boom. That's just a little sample. You want to make it bigger, you know? But yeah. Now let's try some resin. I've got a cheap little epoxy tumbler spinner rotating our parts here. And I've applied this release agent, this man ease release, all over these parts. We're going to mix up our resin. In this case, Smoothcast 65D. 
since that's what I had on hand. And we're just going to apply a layer all over the surfaces here. And basically we're going to let the spinning action do most of the work. And if you don't have an epoxy tumbler spinner, that's all right. You can jerry rig something like this right here. The resin is fully cured and now we can carefully, very carefully y'all please, cut along the outermost edge so that we define two halves, a front and a back side. The back side we can break and remove so that our front mask should uh, hopefully just cleanly pop off of there. Yeah. All right, feels nice. Got a nice feel to it. Now I'm just popping out the blocking. Now we're just gonna trim it down a little bit. We wanna get things nice and clean and as close to the paint surface as possible. And check this out, look. It snaps right onto the part. The craftsman is just adding some green stuff around here to form us somewhat of a flange, which uh, this will prevent overspray, but also it's gonna make it easier to just use the mask. Now here's a neat little mask I wound up uh, making, but not using, but wanted to show you the benefit of rigid resin versus soft silicone. See, you can file and sand rigid masks to get a cleaner edge. As I was finishing up, I decided to use a little more green stuff to make an inner outer mask. One is oversized and one fits the visor exactly. When used together, we should be able to get a border effect with a rim around the visor. So one way or another, we got us a mask and we've got protection from overspray and hopefully we got our edges and everything looking nice and clean for some quick paint jobs. A huge hang-up for Craftman is deciding on color. I'm always referring to this little color swatch right here because I like to see uh, how is a color going to look over white, over black, dark surfaces uh, because it will vary greatly. Craftman also going to grab his respirator. Preparation is critical for a good bond, so I'm rubbing the surface down with vinyl thinner. This will open the vinyl substrate and allow for a chemical bond to the paint. And now finally, let's put these paint mags to the test. Even with Craftsman's lack of airbrush experience, we still got some fairly decent results. 
These figures right here go up on our secret shop, which is linked from our Patreon page. Uh, in fact, Craftsman's getting rid of my Star Wars stuff, uh, except for the stuff y'all have sent me. I would never get rid of this right here. These Star Wars items are very special to me. I'm talking about the surplus of vintage figures I have and just other items that I've got around the shop that I would like to share with y'all affordably. At the heart of this, I'm making more room to display your items. I hope y'all know how much you inspire me out here. Hey, speaking of that, Craftsman had the wonderful opportunity to visit Five Points Festival in Brooklyn, New York. Huge thank you to Vote the Robot. So if you come over here, you can talk and he can hear you and you can hear him through that speaker, okay? Vote has been a tremendous encourager for steady crafting and generously facilitated taking Craftsman all around Five Points Festival. The toys and artwork on display from independent artists was incredibly inspiring. But for me, the highlight was getting to talk to you all artists in real time. Craftsman, this is Roger. I sent you the Mud Valley. So I watch Craftsman every chance I get, and now all of my toys incorporate these uh, ball and sockets. What a phenomenal, tremendous opportunity. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. And thank you so much to my direct supporters. Without y'all, I, I wouldn't be any of this. So thank you so much, so much. Until next time, I love y'all. And keep on steadily, steadily crafting.